Hey everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my channel. If you're new here, my name is Leanne. I am a watercolor artist and I use a little bit of different mediums as well. Uh, and I'm from Canada and so on my channel I just like to share uh, my art process and I like to share some of the art supplies that I buy. And sometimes I do art blogs as well. I have my own kind of office space at home or art studio, whatever you call it. I call it many different things. It's where I work and where I play and um, yeah. So anyways, I hope you enjoy this video. I'm going to share with you uh, my Birdtober sketches that I did for Birdtober in 2023, which was in October. And I wanna share with you something I'm working on right now as well. If you are interested in this kind of content, be sure to subscribe, hit the subscribe button below and hit the like button if you enjoy the video as well. I'd really appreciate it. So we'll get into it in a second. I wanna share with you right now, I'm doing Burb Fest 2024. And all of these challenges are ones that I found on Instagram. This one I'm doing in my new Hobonichi. I've never used this format before, but I bought the A6 uh, book. And so I didn't really know what I was gonna do with this and I decided to use it as a bird challenge book. And so this is the Hobonichi Techo Planner. Uh, and so I've just been uh, doing a sketch a day. So I've just been going through Bird Fest and I've been just using all the different mediums that I have laying around my office. I have so many different types of mediums. I have watercolor, gouache, Posca, pen and ink, dip pen, uh, neo colors, pencil crayon or colored pencil. Um, and I've just kind of been grabbing what I feel like. And uh, yeah, so I do need to catch up on some birds. Today's the 14th and this is, um, I'm on the 13th. So I started sketching out this bird, but I had to go to a birthday party. Uh, so this is the last one I've done. You can check out my progress if you follow me on Instagram at Art, and I'm also on threads. I post all of my birds there so you can get a, a peek at every bird I do as I go through them. Uh, if you follow me on threads, I do post a little bit more over there, just kind of behind the scenes content too. Um, just little things around my workspace or art things I run into, which is kind of fun. So let's go through my Birdtober sketches. So I did Birdtober and it was hosted by Andrea Holmes. Uh, A Holmes Art Studio is the Instagram handle. And so she hosts Birdtober, which is kind of like a compliment to Inktober or like um, something you can do instead of Inktober. I love birds and this is kind of a natural fit. There's a few bird challenges I do every year. Um, there is definitely Birdtober I love. And there's Avian August in the month of August. There's Bird Fest in the month of January. There's also Birds in December. And I do that one sometimes as well. Uh, because I completed this challenge, um, she had kind of a form on her site where you could fill out the form and she would send you a sticker to show that you completed Birdtober. And so here's my little badge of honor that I completed Birdtober, it's so cute. And I really love this little sticker and I'm trying to find somewhere precious to put it because it's very special and it signifies that I completed the challenge. So um, yeah, and this is the card that she sent along with it, which was really nice. And so I think if you are in the States and you do this and you enter the draw, I think you can go into an actual draw for items. Um, but of course I'm in Canada, so she just does the mail it, which is super nice too. And so awesome. I love it. I love the little stickers. My first year getting it. So I wanted to share that before I shared my sketches, but let's get into what they look like. I did all my sketches in my Etcher sketchbook and this is cold press. And here's a look at my birds. And so what happens with the challenge is you get a list every day for every day of the month. And in this case, October, you're given a bird to draw. And these are the birds that I did. So most of the birds I did in watercolor, this is a blue winged pita or pitta. Um, and this was for the first day. And I think you can kind of maybe see the gold. There's a little bit of it there. I had fun just at the end. I have a fine tech palette of just gold um, ink and I would just pick a different gold each day that I wanted to put um, on my bird. This is a look at what the case looks like for the palette here. And this is the fine tech palette that I use. I don't really have an opportunity to use this very much. I think it's probably more prominent with people who do lettering, uh, calligraphy work and that sort of thing. But these are fun just to add accents. I've had this forever. I bought this maybe three years ago and I do use it. Uh, not all the time, but I do pull it out here and there and 
it looks like the pans have barely been touched and I've I feel like I've used it more than it looks like so it is really nice to work with I would like to get some other colors someday maybe I know they do have other palettes as well I just got this gold one to start though and I thought Birdtober would be a fun opportunity just for me to use it each day so this one is a Cuban Trogan and this one was really pretty it had like these fancy tail feathers that I really enjoyed uh, painting as well and this one here is the Eastern Rosella, which is sort of parrot style, I guess. And then the Superb Fruit Dove. And these all have the gold accents. Some have copper. I think the parrot does have the copper. I'm not sure if maybe you can see the glimpses of, you can see a little bit here, like the gold. Uh, no, I just came in at the end and just did some light line work with the gold at the end. And then working on my spread here, day five, was the common tailor bird. Super cute. And then this one was, oh, this was so fun, this albatross. I found this picture of him just flying, like he was coming in for a landing. And I just always try to find unique poses when I can because it kind of pushes me a little bit when I'm drawing to do something that's not typical for a bird pose. And this one was pretty um, well received on Instagram. It was really fun. This one here is the Bearded Reedling. He's got this dark patch around his eye, so it makes it a little bit trickier to get him where he doesn't look like he doesn't have an eye to paint it that way. Uh, but it turned out pretty good. And then we have Pintailed Wida up here. This had this super long tail, really pretty bird. A lot of these I had not heard of before. Also too, I always get really proud when I do a spread like this and I break the frame and kind of putting this albatross across two pages, the Etcher sketchbook handles it really well too because it's almost seamless and you can even put watercolor, if you happen to see the threads in the binding, uh, you can watercolor them and it'll blend right in. So it makes it really uh, nice when you do have to cross a page. It, it just, it seems like I'm breaking rules when I go across like a folded page and I'm not very good at it because my mind always wants to keep everything segmented. And so when I do this, I feel really proud that I did that. I feel like I've accomplished something very big. Uh, this one here is the Peregrine Falcon and super amazing pose. And I tried to just kind of give him that superhero look with the wind uh, passing around here with the sky background, which was fun. For most of these birds, I just tried to do a simple background. I put a lot of focus just on the details in the bird itself. Uh, this is a strawberry finch for day 10. And then this one here, super big bird, is a magnificent frigate bird. Frigate bird. So again, I have not heard of a lot of these, but this one was really unique and had his little puffy thing out. And yeah, so that was the pose that I chose. For this one here, we get back to some cute little birds. And this is the Azur Tit, and I've painted these quite a few times. They're always very sweet. They kind of look like bluebirds, I guess, sort of and just him hanging on the reeds and doing kind of the gold um, little extra reeds in there was really pretty too. A lot of fun. And I had fun as well just kind of um, playing with the backgrounds and doing different colors throughout the spread or kind of giving the, the entire spread a kind of a certain tone versus like a different page. This one is the Po Tu. And I really have to feel that this was a night bird. I tried to paint sort of like a darker background for the night scene. Uh, I believe I used Indigo from Windsor & Newton for this. Whenever I have to paint like a night scene, I always go to that color because it's super rich. And I think I might have put a little bit of Daniel Smith Moon Glow around the closest part of him as well. Uh, but these big eyes are always kind of creepy to me when the the night birds with their great vision have these crazy big eyes. A little scary. Uh, this one here, day 14, is the Scarlet Ebus. And I'm actually, I actually did another Scarlet Ebus for the Burb Fest 2024 challenge. So you can see that on my Instagram as well. That one I did in uh, just dip pen which is something new to me. But this one here, I did all watercolor. Normally I'll use uh, Neo colors as well in my watercolor drawings, but these ones I try to keep strictly just watercolor for the most part. Uh, this is a white naped crane in day 15. 
And then this one over here is the Cattle Egret. And that one looks super cool as well. I really like how the background turned out for that one. And then we're at day 17 here, and this is a Turaco. And then day 18, these birds are a little bit more my speed, kind of the tiny little songbirdy looking ones. And this is a Cape Battis. And this one had kind of like diamond shapes on the tips of its tail on the underside, which was kind of neat. And as I went through, I tried to vary the gold that I used too. If I used uh, like a light gold one day, I'd try to use like a copper the next day and mix it up. But I did go sort of by the type of bird too. If it was a lighter color, I'd use a lighter gold. And then over here, I have a pink robin for day 19. Super cute little bird, super fluffy. And then this one, day 20, is a pine grosbeak. I don't have a lot of success painting red birds. I always find them very tricky. I think um, just because red is such a hard color to capture, and then when it dries, it dries a different color than when it goes down when it's wet. And then making it just look, I don't know, just something about red birds I find very challenging. Uh, this one here is a blue throat, super cute. And of course here, a bohemian waxwing enjoying a berry. And I love this one. This is a black-headed gull. He's got a little bit of a strut to him as he goes through the sand here. I thought that was really fun. And then this crazy bird over here, um, ornate hawk eagle. They always, always the kind of predator birds are a little bit, um, I don't know, kind of freak me out a little bit because they seem a little bit aggressive. I think I like the soft, tiny, innocent birds that are gentle. I assume they're gentle. <laughs> Uh, this one here, a Mandarin Drake, super, super pretty, and I kind of just went to town with the gold accents and enjoyed adding all of the shimmer and stuff with that one, and the colors, just so pretty. I had a lot of fun blending, like these blues and the purples, and even the greens, too. This bird's so fun, this emu. Uh, he had this weird, wide stance on him, and he just kind of looked like he was super matter-of-fact about his opinion. And I thought he was really fun, so that was the pose that I chose. And this little penguin over here, a blue penguin, really cute. And then a parrot bird, a gala, coming in down off the frame. I thought that was really fun to finish out the spread as well. And then this one I gave a whole page to. I have a, something about crows. They are super cool, and I have a back choice or I mean a backstory about that so this was artist choice that's I was reading it sorry that's why I said that but um so on this day we could pick whatever bird we wanted so that's why I did a full page and I did a crow and my story with crows is not that they're my favorite bird maybe they're starting to be but we always had crows where I grew up and I live there now I bought the house and um, we still have crows we have three crows that hang around our home and my grandma used to love the crows and she called them her pets and I've probably talked about this in other videos but she would always feed the crows and I'd be like why do you feed the crows and she goes well they're my pets and I being young was like oh, okay whatever and didn't really think much about it and then now that I'm older and I don't have her here anymore with me I feed her crows for her and they come out and they know when I'm around they know when I'm putting food out and they're super cute um, I've always read those stories online where crows will bring you treats and presents and stuff. They haven't brought me anything yet, but I like having them around. They're just, they're pretty magnificent bird. They're pretty big and unique compared to the other songbirds that hang around our property. And so that was my choice for that day. Um, and then for day 30, it was the Allen's Hummingbird. This one had beautiful oranges and golds, and I just really enjoyed stretching my wings sort of so to speak um with all of the golds and oranges in my palette especially those core colors the quinacridones they're so pretty and that was a lot of fun to paint and then for the 31st which was halloween um it was the spotted owl another one of those birds with big eyes because they have good night vision which is pretty crazy and that is the look at all of my bird tober so this book i have not painted anything else and i started this book over a year ago and I have quite a few pages left, you can see. Um, this is the Etcher Sketchbook. Let me see when I started this. Uh, it was March of last year, March 18th, 2023. There's something about these sketchbooks. They're Fabriano paper, they're beautiful. They intimidate me, and I think it's the hard cover 
that they just feel very precious and they're expensive and I just don't want to paint anything that's terrible. So I always know that when I paint something in them, I have to be committed and it has to be a precious painting. And so I'm always nervous to use it and I never use it. So I don't know that these sketchbooks are really a good solution for me. I think with the Hobo Nietzsche that I've been using, um, I've been really enjoying just kind of opening this up and sketching as I go and not worrying about being precious with this book because uh, it's just, you know, it's just a, a journal. It's not meant to be anything final or fantastic. It's just meant to have fun and there's no pressure. But now I'm starting to get into this theme, if you can tell, where there's like a bird in the background block and I'm... I'm behind a couple days, so I want to do it really quickly and just fly through a few birds. But every time I sit down to paint, I'm like, well, I've got all these nice birds and then I don't want to do a crap bird and then have like my, my sequence kind of be hit and miss, right? So, I mean, when I started, I did like this bird and yeah, I've just been really enjoying, I don't know, enjoying this process, but I do have to do a couple birds tonight. So that's what I'm working on. Uh, but I did want to share because the challenges are really fun. And I think just doing this way of jumping into a sketchbook like this, it makes it a nice way to get back into things. We were really busy, my sister and I, during uh, November and December. Uh, we have another thing that we do and we had a ton of orders and I had no time to paint. So this has been nice kind of getting me back into it. I really, for 2024, I want to do a lot of travel journaling. I would like to paint more than just birds. I would like to start doing some sketches of travel sketches and journaling. And I'm not sure what that's going to look like um, because I'm not very good or I don't feel that I'm as proficient at sketching scenes or, you know, like a picture of being somewhere out on the street, like an urban sketch. I'd like to get maybe better at that, but it's kind of intimidating and I don't like things that take a long time. So maybe sketching macros while I'm traveling, maybe that's what I need to do. But I do need to kind of look at that a little bit. But birds are kind of my safe zone. So right now I feel like I'm okay because there's low barrier to doing birds for me. It's kind of easier than it used to be because I'm used to it. I'm used to how they look and how the structure is. Um, but I do want to stretch my wings as far as painting different things or painting like travel journal. That's really what I want to focus on. Anyways, and maybe just doing a little bit more watercolor. Obviously, it's I did watercolor here, but it doesn't work as well in this book. So I think I'm just going to keep this as my kind of rough journal. And yeah, I would like to try some more mediums, though. I'm going to see. I think I might do a pen and ink for here. This was dip pen. I've been enjoying the colored pencils. And yeah, so anyways, follow along on Instagram and threads if you want to keep up to my daily art journal kind of peaks. Um, also as well, if you join, my channel has a membership, you get some free emotes to put on your comments and you get a percentage off on my store. If you visit my online store at leannelandart.com, uh, you'll get a discount code if you join the memberships and also you'll get uh, early access to videos on my channel. So if you are interested in that, I'll have a link down below for memberships. And yeah, otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up because that always helps. And shows me that you like this kind of content and be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more and be notified when the next video is posted to my channel let me know what your art goals are for 2024 and if there's anything else you're thinking of exploring maybe new areas of art that you haven't tried before um, or if there's any art supplies or new things that you're looking to try in the new year i almost forgot to share but i made these stickers for my shop if you're a taylor swift fan you probably know what these mean um, but from the song karma and one of the lines say, karma is cat purring in my lap because it loves me. And so I wanted to make a karma cat that looked like my cat because I have a calico. And so with the design, I tried to mimic her markings a little bit. So this is Sabrina. And then I did a pink version as well. So if you do want to pick these up, they're in my shop. And I do offer free uh, shipping on my stickers. You can visit leanlandart.com. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.